Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and this is Sorvent's non-meta tournament number three, second place deck profile, which has been uh, played by Maticus, and uh, he did really well, he got second place obviously, and he played Shadal Invoked, so uh, I did initially do a deck profile with him, uh, however, I did it twice actually, the first time uh, the audio actually just ended up corrupting, and the second time, uh, I believe... It just, like, the video itself just corrupted. So, unfortunately, I don't have him personally here to talk about his deck list. Uh, but that is okay. I uh, do believe I have a good understanding of his deck, so I can talk about it pretty well. So, let's go ahead and get into it. So, he's playing, obviously, the two copies of Alistair the Invoker. Uh, just because this is a insane normal summon, even with Makaba being banned in the non-meta tournament. Uh, just because you can link it off into Almirage, and then link it off into Secure Gardener. And then Secure Gardener, you can fuse with any of your Shadals to make Construct. So it's a one-card Construct, or not a one-card Construct, because obviously you need a, uh, a Shadal monster in your hand, because you're searching the invocation to fuse. Uh, so it is still really good. It also turns, I mean, if you have another fusion spell, you can still just use your invocation later for... Uh, a copy of Purgatrio, which is really nice. And uh, another thing that I'll, I'll get to in a moment, but I do want to put up on the screen uh, is a Godis, but I'll get to that in a second. So obviously he is playing a going second list, which is why uh, cards like Pinker Tops, Super Poly, Lightning Storm, Evenly Matched, and Mind Control all appear in his list. Uh, super good cards, obviously, just like really, really good cards. Uh, he's playing three copies of Effect Veiler just because it is a light uh, target for Construct. So if you do happen to draw it and it is dead in your hand, you can still fuse it to make Construct, which is really nice as well. Uh, just being able to have like double utility being a hand trap and also fusion material. Uh, it makes it really good. He did say that he did wish that he played the Ghost Ogres in the main deck, as well as a copy of Emergency Teleport, uh, just because uh, Emergency Teleport can also get you into your Ghost Ogre, or it can get you into Rishadal Windy, since it is a psychic monster as well. Uh, le level 3 or lower, obviously, is what uh, emergency, te emergency Teleport needs. Then, for the rest of his Shadal uh, engine, or, I mean, before we get into the Shadal engine, uh, he's opting to play the one copy of Trick Clown. Uh, no other of the Performage cards, I think he just said that they weren't, like, super worth it. Uh, Trick Clown is the best one, just because it turns your Shadal Fusion into a Boralode Dragon, just a one card, assuming your opponent has a monster or summon from the extra deck. Because you send... Uh, probably your Squamata, I believe. Squamata Trick Clown. And then you can use your uh, Trick Clown to summon itself back. Obviously, you get your Construct and your Squamata effect to send the Incarnation and the Wendy. Wendy will send your Ariel and the Squamata will send the Incarnation. I guess you could do it in either way. Uh, then you use your Incarnation to... I think actually you link off your Construct and your Trick Clown into a Cross Sheep. Then you use your incarnation to banish your construct and itself, and then you can target your aerial, and then flip summon your aerial, bring back the construct, and then the construct can bring back another monster from your grave, which is most likely the trick clown. And then if you want, you can overlay your trick clown or your uh, aerial, um, or you can just link off your trick clown, your aerial, and your cross sheep into a Borla dragon, uh, which is really nice. It's a one-card Borla dra dragon, or I guess any link for, since you can make like unicorn and leave something on field and then make another link for uh super nice although your construct is going to be in defense mode uh with that combo then uh obviously he's playing the one copy of Ariel. this could be good in certain matchups to play two copies of however it's more important in the tcg than it is uh in the non-meta tournament just because like this is super good against eldritch just to banish their uh, traps from the grave uh, other than that it doesn't really have a like reason that you'd want to play more than one copy so just one copy is fine. He opted to play one copy of Kaios, and this is just because it is a searchable way to get into Construct. So if you are if you have like a Hedgehog uh, and you do need access into your uh, a light t uh, target to make your Construct, you can just search it with your Hedgehog. Uh, he said that it wasn't super important and he would cut it from the deck just because Kaios is honestly pretty bad other than that. Because uh, usually when you want to make a light monster, you can just normal summon your Hedgehog, link it off into Almirage, and then, you know, link that off into Secure Guard any of your light target. So, like, there's no reason for him to play this. You could do that also with, like, you know, Effect Veiler even. I mean, obviously with Effect Veiler, it is just your, your summon or whatever. But, like, it's just it just didn't seem very good at all. Uh, he did mention that there's a new Magistus 
uh, Link monster that just requires a uh, level 4 lower spellcaster type monster. Unfortunately, the picture's not showing up, but uh, that's your entire deck outside of Wendy. So you can just turn any of these in a normal summon, I guess, except for uh, Beast, obviously. You can just turn any of these guys into a uh, light monster. So there's no reason to play the Kaios anymore, especially after the release of the Majestus Link monster. So, yeah. Then, uh, obviously, three copies of Wendy. This is probably the second best or even first best shit out monster, uh, just depending on how you r uh, rate Skumana. I guess Skumana would technically be the first since it is another copy of Wendy, uh, but we'll get there in a second. So, uh, two copies of Beast. There's no reason to play three of this or even one of this. I think it comes up often enough where the two copies are fantastic. One copy of Dragon, just because it's an in-archetype spell trap destruction. He's also citing a second one, which we'll get to later as well. Two copies of Hedgehog. He said that this was the third best Shadal monster, which I completely agree with. This is a very good Shadal monster. However, there's not really a reason to play three, because when you need the third one, you can just search it with Skormata, um, or not, or at least trigger the effect with Skormata. So there's really not another reason to... I guess you could play three if you wanted to like get more access into your Shadal spells and traps, but there's really no reason to. I mean, you're playing so many fusion spells anyways. Uh, three copies of Squamata, which, like I said before, I think is the best Shadal monster in the deck, just because it is three copies of every Shadal in your deck. Uh, if you think about it this way, it is a uh, spell trap destruction. It's a draw, or an upstart goblin, rather. A free special summon, or a, you know, a triple DD Crow, which is, like, super good. Um, if you just think about it that way. Also, it's a free search if you need an extra card in your hand. Then he's playing a small Trickstar engine, which is just, like, two cards. <laughs> just the Corobane at Light Stage. Uh, just because it's a searchable, like, way if you use, like, Terraforming or Set Rotation or Light Stage to get into a Light Monster. Uh, he did say that it you could play Candina, but there's really no reason to. Uh, just because if you play the Candina, you're just, you could make a Link too, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having a Light Monster in your hand. Um, you could play a Candina and a Lycoris, which would put a Link 2 on the field, which would probably be your Cross Sheep, as well as, like, a Light Monster in your hand. Uh, and then you could use your Light Monster target for Construct. So that's also kind of good, but I don't think there's really too much of a reason to. You could, you could mess around with it a little bit if you wanted to, but I don't think there's a whole reason to play that engine as well. I do like the one copy of Corbane, though, just because it's a searchable extender or light target. Three copies of El Shadal Fusion, just for, you know, extra fusing, I guess. It's such a good card, being able to fuse on your opponent's turn as well. Even with Winda not being able to, in, uh, like, with uh, Winda being banned in non-meta tournament, I still think that this card is just insane. One copy of Foolish Burial, just because this is, I guess, another copy of Squamata. <laughs> uh, like I said before, it's just Squamata. It's insane. Uh, three copies of Invocation, just because you can search this with uh, Alistair. Also, being in your hand is really good. Also, if you didn't know, this is not once per turn to Fusion Summon. It's once per turn to like shuffle cards back or shuffle the Alistair back into your deck. Or shuffle this back into your deck, sorry. And then add the Alistair back to your hand. So that's a once per turn effect. However, the uh, actual fusing is not once per turn. So you can still like fuse two of your Shadals, like a like Wendy Beast or something. Make you know your App Cologne. And then you can also search another one with Invoker. Uh, and then you can just make like a Perka Trio or something. One copy of Lightning Storm and three copies of Magical Meltdown. So Magical Meltdown is obviously the way to get into Alistair and then the way to get into Invocation. So he's playing nine fusion spells and this is just obviously extra ways to get there. So he's playing uh, the three, the two, so that's five, six, seven. So seven other ways to get into fusion spells. So technically he is playing 16 copies of fusion spells in his deck. Uh, I, I guess uh, 18 if you want to count. Or sorry, 17 if you want to count the polymerization. Uh, I personally probably wouldn't call, count this, but um, that is, you know, 16 ways to get to a fusion spell. So... Uh, that's almost half his deck. <laughs> Pretty crazy. One copy of Mind Control, one copy of Set Rotations, just because Set Rotation can also set the Light Stage or the Meltdown. Either case, it's just fantastic being able to, you know, hit a back row uh, or um, search for a fusion spell. is really nice. Uh, then the three copies of Shadow Fusion, just most broken card on the entire deck, let's be honest. Uh, this card by itself will just win you games. It's super unfair. I think it's just a plus three by itself. 
uh, just because you trade one for one with your fusion monster. You send two other cards to your grave, which is like typically your Trick Clown or your Squamata. Or, uh, typically, I think it is Trick Clown and Squamata, but um, there's other cases where you send other monsters as well. But I mean, there's not much else to say about this card. It's just fantastic. I Like I said, uh, it's a plus two, uh, in some cases plus three. So really insane card. Uh, one copy of Super Polymerization. He said this was really underwhelming, especially with Winda not being a in the game. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do with this card. I mean, you could fuse for a dark uh, fire or a wind, or I guess a light monster, but that's like super rare, and there's not very many reasons to play this. He said he'd put it in the side deck uh, in future versions of the deck, which makes a lot of sense. One copy of Terraforming, just another fusion spell, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, one light stage, being insane, just pop it back, bro, so good. Uh, one copy of Evenly Matched, this is just insane for going second, makes sense. One copy of Imperm, and one copy of Rush at All Incarnation. So I asked him if he would play multiple copies of this moving forward in other lists, and he said that he would if he was playing a going first list, uh, just because you can loop this with the construct, very similar how the Dante Seer loop works, uh, just because uh, obviously you set this card, uh, summon back your construct on your opponent's turn, and then uh, the next turn it dies, or dies on that turn, whichever, and then you just bring back your incarnation back to your hand. So uh, then you can set it the next turn, bring back, a Shadal, bring back your construct, and then it dies, bring back the incarnation. So it's just an infinite loop, which is really nice. Uh, technically, uh, it's just really good. Uh, moving on into the extra deck, he's just opting to play the three copies of Construct and the one copy of Apcolone. No other should all monsters, there's no reason to. He could play Grista or uh, Shekinaga technically if he wanted to. I guess Wendigo as well, but Wendigo is terrible, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, just because you can use your Alistair to link off into Almirage, and then from there you can use your Almirage and you should all to make Grista. There's no reason to do that, since you can literally just link off the Almirage into Secure Garden and then make Construct anyways. So you're not you're not doing anything if you do that there, there's it's just there's no reason to uh obviously the app cologne is just a fantastic card as well then uh he's going he's playing four copies or sorry three copies of invoked cards so uh one kaliga one purgatrio and one raijin uh the raijin is really nice since we uh you can banish the wendy uh for your fusion material to make the raijin just for an extra interruption so typically you can end your board um just like with you know, your Raijin, sometimes with Kaliga too. It's just like an extra interruption on your opponent's turn, which is really cool. Uh, then the one copy of Purgatrio, just this card's insane. There's not really much else to say about this. Kaliga is also really good, just being a stun. Uh, your entire Shadal deck is all dark monsters, so it makes sense why you'd play this. It's just a stun. It's super good. Uh, then the one copy of Abyss Dweller, which he said was. Uh, initially the reason he played this is because sometimes you end your boards with two level fours that you don't do anything with typically you would just you know use those to make wendy or sorry not uh, wendy uh to make winda on your opponent's turn but there's really no reason to do that you can't do that in an mt because uh wendy winda is banned uh, but you could make the abyss dweller which is also really good you could also make ip which is probably, like, uh, I was talking to him about that, and he said the IP would be definitely a better choice over Abyss Dweller. Uh, also, he could play a one copy of Agoides, which is another Alistair fusion, or Invoke fusion, rather, uh, just because it's a pop, which is super good. Uh, so I guess those are two other options for Abyss Dweller, because he said he never made this. One copy of Alistair, the Invoker of Madness. This card is so good, just being able to get another fusion spell from your deck to your hand. Just fantastic. One copy of Borlo Dragon. This just outs certain cards that you can't out normally. One copy of Cross Sheep. One copy of Gravity Controller, since you can link this off with your Construct. Uh, then the one copy of Unicorn, which typically when you use your Cross Sheep, you're going to have an extra material. Uh, or you can have your Cross Sheep plus your Construct, and you kind of just want the Construct in Graveyard to search for something uh, back from your grave. So you can just link those off into a Unicorn, shuffle something, add something back. Uh, it's just fantastic. And then obviously the one copy of Ambarage and Secure Garden F for the Invoked Engine. Moving on into the side deck, he's on three copies of Ghost Ogre, which uh, he said he would put in the main deck. Just, you know, probably just switch these out completely. Just uh, the three for three makes sense. Uh, and then the one copy of Emergency Teleport, uh, which uh, he 
uh, said would be really good to play in his list. He wasn't on it, though. Uh, three copies of Jizukiru, just because this is a light kaiju. He could also opt to play the Thunder King kaiju. I think it's Thunder King, if I remember correctly, uh, which is also a light target. Uh, this is probably better just because its stats are a little lower than at least the defense is. So I guess that's like a good upside of it. The other upside is that uh, technically, uh, if you are playing against Cyber Dragons, they can fusion this with uh, the Chimer Tech Fortress Dragon, I believe. Uh, they can just contact fuse it, so this isn't like super great. But um, obviously, I think that the Thunder King is the better option to play out of these two, but realistically, there's not much difference. Then the other copy of Shadal Dragon, which is also um, in the list here. Just, you know, an in archetype spell trap removal makes a lot of sense. Three copies of Cosmic Cyclone just for the extra spell trap removal. It's just a fantastic card. Uh, he decided not to play Twin Twisters just because you're going to be using the rest of your hand, which makes sense just because, you know, you're at least going to need three cards to fusion summon if you think about it. Just like a uh, light target, a Shadal monster, plus a fusion spell. So that's at least three cards in your hand. Uh, so that makes sense why he is not playing Twin Twisters. One copy of Dimensional Barrier, he said he doesn't remember seeing this at all. Uh, then the three copies of Dynamischus, which is super good for going first. I think typically you just side out, you know, cards probably like uh, Evenly, Lightning Storm, Super Poly, Pankertops possibly. I guess those four, maybe uh, Mind Control as well, uh, just for these four right here. And then the last card in the side deck is Red Reboot, just because it is so good against those back row decks. So uh, that's going to do it for this list. Uh, like I said, I think the cards to take out are probably Kaios, the Abyss Dweller, the Super Poly, and then like change the effect for those for Ghost Ogres and add in a Emergency Teleport. And I think that's going to do it for this list. So uh, sorry I couldn't get him specifically to talk about this list, but uh, I think I did uh, know quite the, the list quite well myself. So I hope I explained it pretty well. Anyways, hope he does good next tournament, and uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys uh, for the third deck profile, deck profile, which will be coming out tomorrow.